Back here in recent times, the continuous rise in the price of LPG, otherwise known as cooking gas, has remained a major concern for many. The price of cooking gas has more than doubled in the last one year. This commodity is symbolic because it represents a product that many Nigerians, especially those living in urban and semi-urban areas, need for everyday cooking. Ironically, Nigeria has this commodity in abundance, ninth largest reserve. That's about 207 trillion standard cubic feet as at 2019. And it is a source of clean energy that Nigeria is advocating for many of its citizens to change to. What are the key issues and where are we getting it all wrong? Deputy President, Nigeria LPG Association and the MDA Asiko Energy, Felix Ekundayo, joins us now. Thank you very much, Mr. Ekundayo, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me here. You know, when we talk about LPG, it's really crazy. One question that will come to mind, why do I have to pay such an amount of money to just buy 12.5 kg cylinder of LPG? Why? Okay, it's, uh, it's become a topical issue of late. Um, and the factors related to the price rise are not unconnected with um, reasons why, for example, the uh, federal government and the president are outside the country. It's, uh, we live in a global economy, right? Um, since the end of COVID, there has been a sharp rise in the uh, price of gas internationally, with aff which affects us here. That pulls the price up. But that's um, when we talk about the global, uh, that's natural gas. Uh, natural gas and uh, liquefied petroleum gas, are they same? Um, I, how should we say? We, they, are, they are related. One you might call a, a parent and the other an offspring. So LPG comes out of natural gas. Therefore, if the price of natural gas goes up, if the price of oil goes up, it would naturally pull the price of LPG up. So the three key factors that have driven up the price of LPG, uh, one, as I said, in terms of the global uh, price rise following COVID, there's been a surge in demand that has pushed the price of energy up. Um, there's also been the unfortunate situation where we had the devaluation of the Naira. The gas is priced in dollars, we are paying in Naira, so the devaluation also had a, an impact on that. The third aspect, however, and that's the unfortunate part that we're now seeing, is um, adverse government policy. Um, uh, the effect of the, uh, the first two effects were uh, greatly impacted the price of, that, of LPG in the first two quarters, quarter one. Which is quarter when you talk two. about government policy, which is? The specific area of government policy that has affected us now is um, the imposition of VAT on imports. And not just the imposition of VAT on imports, a retroactive claim on VAT for the last two years. That's actually the biggest component of this spike. So what happened in effect was um, we had an anomaly for about 15 years. The uh, Obasanjo administration had given a waiver, but in the waiver, they erroneously included the word import. So the waiver was on imports. When the domestic LPG program started under NLNG, of course, it was domestic, wasn't, couldn't be classified as imports. FIRS interpreted that to be that they could tax that. Tax that. But you had this uh, uh, anomaly where imports were not taxed and local gas was taxed. So the Nigeria Open Gas Asso Association fought for uh, roughly about 12 years to get that reversed. Every time we've made progress, there will be some change in administration. I mean, we'll taxing the local, the local gas. Correct, no? correct. That made local gas a little bit more expensive See. than import. Um, we were finally able to reverse that situation in 2019 when we got uh, the government to agree that, yes, this should not be taxed, and a gazette was put out. Unfortunately, when they now did the gazette, they, they, they um, um, ill-advisedly now stuck in the phrase domestically produced, as opposed to just writing LPG. That created the reverse problem. So now domestically produced was not vatted, but it left the way open for um, imports to now be vatted. They'd been covered under the uh, Obasanjo uh, waiver, but that was rescinded uh, by a memo from the presidency, which uh, uh, is why I said ill-advisedly so. Now, the, the question again is, why should we be importing gas when, I mean, Nigeria 
houses one of the largest gas reserves? Um, I think we, sometimes we concern ourselves with um, uh, populist, uh, 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 how should we say, mantras. We import quite a lot of stuff. Okay, we import gasoline. The biggest problem we have is not the import of gas. The biggest problem we have is the import of gasoline. That's what is actually affecting the economy the most. You will end up in a situation where you have a balance of trade. Even the U.S. exports gas, imports gas. It really depends on where you are. So well, how much do we import and how much do we produce locally? Um, our, our proportion of imports have actually declined. So the, um, a number of uh, local producers have been operating for about 12 years, be it PNG gas, be it Zenergy uh, and so on. We then had another uh, couple that were um, uh, commissioned and started operation last year. They have contributed to local production. We have probably another four or five that are coming up in uh, the near future, Southfield Petroleum, uh, Anor Gas, and so on. So there's actually quite a lot in the pipeline for domestically produced LPG. Okay, what you don't want is a shock to the system, and that shock is what has just been introduced. Um, we will always have a situation where we'll have uh, an element of imports and an element of domestically produced, but the share of imports is declining. What has happened is that it's been forced to decline a little bit too, a little bit too fast compared to the rate at which inland producers are coming up. Now, there's this argument that um, another issue that um, this sector is facing is the type of cylinder that we use and, of course, the type of um, LPG that we produce, okay. as in matching with the type of cylinder um, that we use. And, of course, I, I think we still import cylinders, isn't it? Um, we, yes, we import cylinders. Um, but again, it takes time to get a manufacturing base up. In that time, there have been two major, um, uh, at least actually three. Uh, you have um, Ron Gas, who set up their, um, setting up their um, fiber glass cylinders. You've got Techno Gas has set up a, a factory down in the Lecky axis. And you have a Chinese company that's been manufacturing for a number of years. They changed names, so I don't have their, their current name. But these are people producing cylinders locally. They have their challenges as well in terms of to do with policy and how you bring steel and material in to produce the cylinders. I'm not entirely um, sure what the context of matching cylinders to um, gas kind is. Of gas. Mm. Mm. Okay, now for your association, what role do you play really in um, advocacy and of course in controlling uh, perhaps the, the prices? We do not... Um, um, intervene on prices. We do not have the mechanism to. LPG has always been a deregulated product, so we don't have the mechanism to. What we do do is advocacy. What we also do is in terms of bringing in the right um, um, uh, uh, skills and standards for people who want to work in the industry. It's only through the application of the best practices that you can bring down um, or you can make the industry more efficient. Uh, prior to this shock that we've seen to the system, in fact, in real terms, gas pricing had been declining over time. Um, this is the first time since the domestic LPG program, the DOM LPG program of NLNG, that we have seen gas prices hit this high. The last time it came this high was just before the DOM LPG program started, which was in 2007. So in my own, um, uh, uh, how should we say, 30 years or so of, of being in the gas business, uh, this is a unique uh, period. And I think it is one that requires urgent attention and coordinated attention. So talking about urgent attention and coordinated attention, what is that urgency there, what do you think should be done right now to really salvage the situation? And when are we likely to see the law of gravity taking a course in this matter? Okay, we are already beginning to see a significant impact on um, imports and importers because they feel persecuted. And you could argue that they, they are being persecuted. And yes, there's a revenue drive, but you're not going to gain a lot of revenue from a, a product that you are effectively promoting. We're supposed to be in the decade of gas, right? Mm -hmm. you, therefore, we would, uh, it's incumbent on the government to make sure that in this decade of gas, it is easy to use gas, not difficult. 
Um, gas already has a lot of challenges. We're supposed to be going into auto gas. Auto gas can't really grow without the subsidy on petroleum products being removed. Uh, we're supposed to be going into industrial consumption of gas. But if the, ga if the gas price is high, you're not going to get a lot of manufacturing industries using it. Then the domestic sector, which is the mainstay of the LPG industry, um, has this uh, shock to the system in terms of the, the, the rise in the price of uh, the cylinder, which the home, which homes and uh, consumers can't afford. The real biggest issue is not the VAT going forward. The biggest issue is the is the way customs has gone about claiming two years of retroactive taxes. How do you claim taxes on the gas that was already sold over two years and then dump it on um, um, our stakeholders? Right? How are they going to move forward? Some have actively decided they're shutting up shop for this year. They are not bringing in cargoes. I recently saw a memo yesterday to another producer, uh, to another um, uh, terminal from customs, effectively threatening them if they don't start paying within seven days, they were going to shut them down. How do you claim two years of back taxes? Right? By the way, this is after a meeting that was held in Abuja with the supervising ministry of the customs and excise and where they said yes they accept that something has to be done and the um, the memo from the presidency needed to be addressed but in the meantime customs has gone out on a revenue revenue dash uh, imports in um, September crashed by 50 percent to what they were in uh, August that's a significant drop it's a supply-driven product, okay? Therefore, if you cut supplies, prices will spike. That's what we are seeing now. So we are likely going to have a, a difficult Christmas? Is that what's, what we expected to have? I mean, we will probably not uh, find gas to cook our food. Um, it's a self-inflicted injury, and it's one that can still be mended, okay? So we have time, so I won't I wouldn't give a prognosis that we are going to have a very bad Christmas. However, if we don't resolve this How issue, much talk have you been, I mean, your association, how have you been discussing with the government to ensure that this ends before uh, this year rounds up? Um, there have been a number of uh, uh, um, approaches, soft approaches, formal approaches via letter, physical approaches through meetings where stakeholders were requested to attend a, mid, a, a meeting with the Ministry of Finance. All of those issues have been tabled. All of those issues are known. What I said earlier, I said coordinated action. We are not getting coordinated action from the government. One part of the government is saying, yes, we understand what the problem is. Another part is saying, well, I have been given a mandate to raise money. Therefore, I am going to raise money on t unless I get to hear from um, uh, 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 Ogar at the top, whoever that may be. That's the issue we have. So we've got um, uh, uh, two arms of government not agreeing with each other, and the executing arm of that go of government at the moment is an issue. Mm. Coordinated action. A major takeaway. Well, let's just hope uh, we eventually get it right and get all of these uh, resolved because we must cook plenty of food <laughs> this Christmas. Thank At you very Christmas. much, Mr. Um, for coming on the show. We do appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on board. It's a pleasure. Well, Mr. Felix Ikundayo is the Deputy President, Nigeria LPG Association, and of course the MD Asiko Energy. Commodities Market Update is next after the break. Do stay with us.